two telescopes, the same focal length, the same aperture, the same object, but a different price. Hello and welcome back to a new video on my channel. When people are talking about astrophotography, they often think and say that you have to use an expensive telescope to achieve great results in astrophotography. So tonight I'm going to use two different telescopes for astrophotography. The one is a beginner telescope, it costs around 150 euros and the other one is a bit more expensive and it costs around 600 euros and I'm very excited for the differences a bigger telescope in this case a telescope that's more expensive makes an astrophotography I'm very excited for the differences and if there is a difference so I'm as well excited and interested if I'm going to achieve better images with a telescope that is more expensive so the question of today's video is do I have to buy an expensive telescope to achieve correct results and if there is a big difference when it comes to the price. So if you are interested in that question, make sure to watch the entire video. All that and everything right after the intro. This video is not sponsored and not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now I would like to start by introducing the two telescopes we are going to use. So as I already mentioned, the very first telescope is a beginner telescope. So I would like to show you the telescope right now. So um, this is the very first telescope. I'm now going to attach it to um, the mount in order to explain a few basic details about um, this telescope. Here we go. So I'm going to attach um, the counterweights um, in a few minutes. So this will be the very first telescope we are going to use. Um, as I already explained in the intro, this is a beginner telescope and it's the Press and Pollux 150-750 millimeter telescope. So it has an aperture of uh, 150 millimeters, which means that the mirror built inside has a diameter of 150 millimeters. So it's a mirror telescope, reflector telescope. Um, to be more precise, uh, it's a Newtonian telescope. It has a focal length, a focal length of 750 millimeters. So when buying this telescope, you have to buy it um, um, in combination with a mount and a tripod. So I bought uh, this telescope in combination with an EQ3 mount and a tripod for around uh, 300 euros. So um, when only buying um, this telescope, if possible, you have to invest something like 150 euros. So um, this is the, the cheaper telescope we're going to use. So we're going to use this telescope in the second part of the night. Tonight. So I'm now going to show you the other telescope we are using, which is a telescope that is more expensive. Therefore, I have to um, set up um, the other telescope because we're going to use the other telescope um, in the first part of the night. So this is um, the second telescope we are going to use. So this is um, the Skywatcher 150, 750 PDS Newtonian telescope. So it's as well a Newtonian telescope. It has an aperture of 150 millimeters too, and a focal length of 750 millimeters. So the focal length and the aperture of both telescopes is the exact same. As I already mentioned, this is the Skywatcher 150, 750 uh, PDS Newtonian telescope. Um, um, I'm using this telescope in combination with a coma corrector. So when buying the telescope itself, you have to invest uh, something like 400 euros, um, depending on, on the shop where you're buying it. And as I mentioned, I'm going to attach a uh, coma corrector that costs around um, 200 euros. So in summary, it's around 600 euros, only the telescope and the um, coma corrector. So um, tonight I'm going to split tonight's astrophotography session into two sessions. And the very first part of the night, I would like to use this telescope um, for capturing the Pinwheel Galaxy M101. So we would like to capture um, at least two hours of total exposure time to reveal details in the um, galaxy. Um, after two hours, I would like to change the telescope. Um, so I'm going to use the other telescope, which is the Perseus Pollux telescope. And then I would like to capture two hours of total exposure time once again, which results in total exposure time of four hours. And maybe I'm going to um, combine those two images, so captured with the two telescopes in the end, but I'm not sure about that because this really depends on the difference um, when it comes to the image in the end. So very excited if I'm going to achieve better results with this telescope. Um, yeah, I would like to talk about on the target we are going to photograph later on. As we mentioned, it's, it will be uh, the M101 galaxy, but I would like to talk about the exact framing later on. So now we have to attach the counterweights and then we have to to um, attach, we have to attach uh, the power um, to, and we have to attach the cables to get this telescope ready for tonight's astrophotography session. So that's everything I would like to mention before. And now we have to um, set up the entire telescope the way it is going, uh, the way we are going to use it for tonight. And after that, we have to do the polar alignment process and then get started shooting the uh, Pinwheel Galaxy. So see you later. 
I have now set up the telescope the way we are going to use it for tonight. So I've now attached uh, the cables and the power and see this will be the exact same setup we'll be using for tonight. But before we start, I would like to briefly introduce the telescope we'll be using for, for the first part of the night. So, um, as we mentioned, after two hours of capturing the galaxy, I would like to change the, the telescope. So this will be the very first telescope, so the telescope we are using in the first part of the night. So the basis of this telescope will be the HEQ5 Pro Goji mount, which is this piece. So this allows me to move the telescope onto the exact same framing I've selected before. And this tracking night sky is everything I'm needing, it's everything I need for tonight. On the top, I have attached um, the telescope. So with so this will be the very first telescope I'm going to use. It's the Skywatcher 150 750 PDS neutron telescope from Skywatcher. And yeah, to control this entire setup, I'm going to use um, the CW ASIR Pro. This allows me to control the entire system, so the camera, the guiding system, and the mount. And so later on, I will as well attach my camera to the telescope, um, which will be the Canon EOS 2000D with an APC sensor. And um, since this is a neutron telescope, we will have a lot of coma and file image. To reduce this coma and file image, uh, I'm going to use a coma corrector. So um, at the back of the telescope, I have attached the auto guiding system. So you can see this guiding system here. So um, the guide scope is a 60 millimeter guide scope with a focal length of 240 millimeters, I think, I guess. And um, at the back of the um, guide scope, I've attached the camera, which will be the CWO ASI 120 mm mini mono guiding cam. So our telescope is now ready for tonight. Um, I've already pointed at, um, the mount towards Polaris, not exactly. So later on, I will. Uh, have to do uh, the polar alignment process and now we have to wait until it gets dark and we can start capturing the pinwheel galaxy so tonight we're going to photograph the pinwheel galaxy also known as m101 um, i have selected the object because it's an object that is galaxy that is actually quite bright so we do not have to collect that much exposure time but still i would like to capture at least two hours to get details and it's a very big object as well so we're having some kind of 750 millimeters of focal length so the, ob the object should be a little bit bigger compared to the smaller galaxies. So um, it, will no, it will not fill the entire framing, but still we get a, very, a lot of details in our full image, hopefully. So uh, we'll, we'll see us later when it gets dark and we can start capturing those images. I'm very excited for, different, for the differences between a beginner telescope and this telescope. So hopefully everything goes the way it should go. And that's it for tonight. Last night, everything went quite according to plan then i was able to capture light frames of the galaxy i have planned to photograph at the beginning i mentioned that i plan to um, photograph the pinwheel galaxy um two hours uh, with each telescope which results in two hours of total exposure time with each telescope but after um, capturing the very first light frames with the skywash telescope i have realized that there are only a few details in the image um, because of the moon actually. So um, the moon actually had a big impact on my final image. So therefore I've decided to capture more exposure time to reveal details in the galaxy. Um, as you know, currently um, there's not much time to capture those objects because um, it's only, uh, it's not that long, very dark. Um, so I've decided to capture the pinwheel galaxy over two different nights right now, right now to um, get more exposure time of the object in order to reveal even more detail. So I captured uh, the pinwheel galaxy over two nights right now. Um, each night I captured four hours of total exposure time with each telescope. So in the first night I captured four hours of total exposure time with the Skywatch telescope and in the second night four hours with the Prosopolis telescope and I'm very happy with the results. And there is actually a difference, so I was very excited. So I would like to start with the very first image. Um, so the image you are currently seeing here, this is um, the pinwheel galaxy captured with the Presser Polux telescope. So it's actually amazing. So you have to keep in mind that the telescope used um, is a beginner telescope. It costs only 150 euros, which is definitely not much for deep sky ash photography. So you have to keep in mind that some people are investing thousands of euros just for a Newtonian telescope. And this one costs just 150 euros and it looks actually great. But there are different, definitely differences. I would like to show them later on. So first of all, um, a few details about this image. I used the Canon EOS 2000D, as I mentioned. Um, four hours of total exposure time. Each light frame has a single exposure time of approximately one minute at an ISO value of 800. Um, so Im images were captured at a focal ratio of, of f5.0. So this is the focal ratio of the Newtonian telescope. 
So first of all, I like to um, look at the edges. So there is a bit of comma actually, but that's definitely not a problem. So I didn't use a comma correction in this case, but still there's very less comma in our final image, which is something I really uh, find very impressive. So when using another telescope uh, without a comma correction, you will get a lot of comma in your image, image. But here we don't have that much comma, even without a comma corrector, which is actually impressive. Um, I mean, there's a bit of comma, especially in these corners here, but very, very good in general. Um, so the details are very um, amazing, I think. So in this case, um, when capturing this image, um, I was very, very happy, definitely. Um, the thing that is very interesting right now is the differences between the two telescopes uh, I used for this night. So uh, now I would like to show you um, the second image I captured in the first night with the Skywatch telescope that costs around 600 euros in combination with the coma corrector. Um, I even used auto guiding in this case, so it's not that fair, but still uh, we can compare the two images captured. This is the image captured with the Skywatch telescope. So um, I definitely think that um, this image is way better actually. So if you look at the corners, for example, you can see that there is some kind of no coma in it. So I used the coma corrector, so the coma corrector did definitely a great job. And you can see that there are a lot of background galaxies, for example, here, here, here. And um, in general, um, the stars look very, very good. And uh, there are a lot of details in the, in the galaxy itself. But now I would like to take a look at the differences between the two images. So now I would like to compare the two images captured. So here we go. Um, as you can see, I used a different rotation for both um, images, unfortunately, but I have realized that. So I just um, rotated the image of, of the Prosopolis telescope in order to um, compare the two images better. So first of all, I would like to look at the corners with two of the two telescopes. So just zoom in a bit here and with the other telescope. So first of all, I would like to talk about the details we are able to see. Um, so you can see here a little bit of coma, which is um, the thing I have um, mentioned earlier. There's some kind of no coma in it. But now I'd like to look at the star quality because this, this is something that is very important when buying a telescope. And there is definitely a big difference that um, you can see clearly. So when zooming here a bit into the galaxy, we can realize these two stars. So these are very, very bright stars in the, in the framing we have captured yesterday. And when zooming in a bit more um, on that star, we can see that there is a big difference. So um, in this case, we can see that there are some kind of no spikes. So it doesn't look that good. So we can see um, a lot of spikes here. It just looks like um, the image was captured with a refractor telescope. Um, I don't know why it is like that, but I don't like these spikes actually. But in this case, we have these very symmetric spikes that are very uh, famous um, when capturing um, our deep scale objects with a Newtonian telescope. So we can see that there are four spikes and they are very symmetric. That is something we do not have here. In this case, um, the Skywatch telescope um, is definitely better when it comes to the star quality. But even if you look at the stars, the smaller stars, you can see that these are not that round, so they are some kind of stretched here into that direction, so they are not looking that round. While looking on the other side, you can see that these stars are very, very round, and they are not perfectly round here, but I think that's more due to the auto guiding I used, more due to the tracking. But in this case, they all just stretch to that kind of direction. So, um, but I would like to look at um, the galaxy itself because that was a target we have captured and we're excited for the differences we are able to we are we're able to achieve so now just to take a look at the galaxy so you just have to keep in mind that both images have the exact same exposure time so now we'd like to look at the details so um we're looking at um the center of the galaxy we can definitely see so in my opinion that these details here and these spiral arms here uh, and then here in the area of the of the center, there are way more um, details actually. But even if we look at the outer regions here, we can see that there are even more details um, on the telescope. So when looking at these these regions here, for example, so I think these region, re regions are H alpha regions. So when looking at these regions, we can see, definitely see that um, the stars look a bit better here. 
although they are fantastic here as well, but I think we have a bit more details here. So when comparing the two images, um, we can definitely say that the stars are better when using the Skywatcher telescope, and um, there are way more details as well. But you have to keep in mind that there is a big difference when it comes to the price. So 100, 150 euros and nearly 600 euros. So you just have to keep in mind that this telescope um, is, de is not designed for astrophotography, so um, it's more for observing and for getting your first steps into astrophotography, and it's just for observing actually. So it's pretty impressive what this can do when it comes to astrophotography, so I'm definitely impressed. Um, feel free to comment down below in the comments which image you prefer, and I'm very excited for your answers, and if you think that there's a big difference, or maybe even say that um, you prefer this image. If you found that guide helpful and the video was interesting to you, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription. And definitely make sure to write and comment down below and feel free to write your opinion about a cheap versus expensive telescope in astrophotography. And perhaps you are even having your own experience on this, so make sure to write that down below in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Phoenix.